All right, everyone, I guess it's time to start. We're online. Welcome all. My name is Laura Ritola, and I'm here today to tell you something about my PhD research. I come from Finland, which is a northern country, as much cold as it is here now, and from a city of Oulu, which is even more north, trust me. Um, at the moment, though, um, I live in Abu Dhabi, and I, I work for an, a Finnish educational export project, which also means that my PhD research is a little bit on a hold at the moment and waiting for us to return back to Finland. But, however, I'm very delighted to be here today because this is the first time that I actually get a chance to speak about my research to a scouting audience before it's been either the Ministry of Education in Finland or um, academic audience, so this is really great. Um, I study citizenship within the Finnish scouting. I'm interested in how is citizenship constructed within the Finnish scouting program. So my research questions are, what are the constituents of citizenship that scouts educate their members to? And please remember, in the Finnish context. And also, how do the scouts educate their members to the citizenship? Well, as a scout, it would be quite easy to answer that, well, of course, the activities and the scout method. But I want to look a little bit further, a little bit beyond that. My study is a qualitative study. And I am interested in the activities that the scouting scouts have in their program. I have concluded that the activities have to be the part where the educational aims as well as the values are embedded in. Um, I also have a few interviews. I've interviewed four young scout leaders. And in those interviews, I've uh, concentrated on their views or we've discussed together about how the national education, or I call it education for nationhood, for example, education for Finnishness, how it is related to global education and how they are presented in scouting according to the views of my interviewed people. I was asked here today to come and do a TED-like speech. Um, I'm a huge fan of TED system style. Uh, I wa watch them constantly. I think they are so clever, they're so intelligent, they're so funny, they're so witty. And I feel that I'm none of that. So um, I'm a teacher. I'm used to having workshops. I'm used to having lectures. I'm not very used to having speeches. So please, uh, apolog I do apologize. Sometimes I go to my notes and it may seem that I'm reading for them. It just means that it's a quite a long presentation. I'm quite nervous about it. So please, try to bear with me. So, what have I done so far in my research? I know it's very small. I'm going to tell you what's there. Don't worry. I've gone through all the activities within the Finnish scouting program for all the five age groups. I think approximately around 500 activities. I'm looking at our program commissioner there. Something like that. And, and I made a thematic content analysis of them. So I've read every single activities and I've tried to place them on a map. And here are all the themes that I think the Finnish program has. Those on red, it says safety and first aid. Here. Here, this one on green, it's camping, orienteering and handicrafts. The part in, in lighter blue says multiculturalism, peace education, development education, sex education, alcohol and drugs, and spirituality. And then these sort of pink ones down here are personal well-being, meditation, and reflection. This is dark blue, but I don't think it shows you as dark blue. 
but it says traditional culture, national civics, societal responsibility, media education, local and na national knowledge. Here, this one alone is scouting tradition, so activities that are related to scouting tradition. Uh, the orange ones, it says leadership and social skills. And here the last green ones are environmental education, nature knowledge and consumer education. Quite a lot of themes, right? Why they are on colors like this, I've tried to put them under one name. The name for the red theme here is something that I call civic skills. So if for example, you see a person who is injured, you feel that, yes, I have to help him or her, and I also know how to help. The ones on green here are camping and outdoor activities. Then this unity here with light blue as well as pink, I call it mental development and global education which is something that I will also talk about today. These ones here on a dark blue, it's called Education for Nationhood and Duty to Society. The purple, well, that was the Scouts tradition. And orange, I call Duty to Others. So leadership and social skills are related to that. And the brown or greenish, on top, it's environmental education. I've separated environmental education and outdoor activities from each other, even though they might have the same aim, but I see the environmental education as such is more influencing on the attitudes of people, whereas the camping and outdoor is more like the skills and activity. And from all this, I've categorized three types of citizen that I'm interested. I don't mean that these are the only types. I don't mean that this is the only truth, but I'm interested in my research in these three types. One I call the survivor. That the, this, this type of citizen knows how to act in a nature and has a strong nature relationship something that actually the keynote speaker this morning was also talking about when someone asked about the relationship to nature. And I, I think he raised a very important point that you have to know where you live in and we have to have a relationship with the nature. Then there is a citizenship type that I call Gloganista. And there you have two things embedded. The global perspective that scouting has as well as the local perspective. And that is, I, I would say at the moment, my biggest interest, that how are these two embedded and how do we educate our children to that? And then the third one, I call it now a leader. I hope that while I get back to my research and can do it full time, this name changes. But um, I mean all these leadership skills perhaps not only leading in a group, but being as a member of the group. These two are something that we are talking a little bit more today. Okay, before um, we go to the topic, yeah, there finally there is a topic, don't worry. And I want to say something about qualitative research, because I know that on a global scale, scheme, ideas about qualitative research may differ a little bit. So um, qualitative research means that I'm looking at the content of my data. I'm not looking numbers. I'm not doing any fancy mathematical theories or, or calculations. I look what there is in the scouting activities. Qualitative research from the perspective where I come from is always contextual. So I'm researching Finnish scouting in Finland, which means that 
if a Danish scientist comes to Finland to do the same research, the results may be different. Or if the same research was repeated in Australia, the research uh, results probably would be different. So qualitative research is always contextual. I do interpretations. I sort of put on glasses of different theories and then I look at my data and I look at how does my data, how do the scouting activities look like through those classes. And last of all, in qualitative research, the position of the researcher is quite significant. I'm a scout. I've been a really active scout. Now I call myself as a freelancer, which is quite cool. You get to choose what you do in scouting. But um, I've been a member of our national council for four years. I've been a regional director for four years. I've chaired the intercultural working group of our organization and so on. So that, of course, influences in the interpretation that I do of my research, right? I may see something that a non-scout wouldn't see. But at the same time, I'm sure there are things that remain hidden to me because I am a scout. I'm too close to my topic, so to say. So w I w just wanted to know these things because I want to make sure and clear that I'm talking from the Finnish perspective. I may be unable to answer questions um, relating to, I'm trying to see from which countries you are, but for example, to Slovakian scouting, yes. But hey, let's go finally to the topic, all right? Okay, the organizing committee asked me to look at the future. They said, well, Laura, can you tell the people like what should the scouts educate their members to so that they res can respond to the challenges of future? And I was like, <laughs> wow, yeah, really? I don't know, but maybe some of you have read about the future theories, about the future educational theories. Well, there's quite a lot. Here is just three. There's anything, almost anything, can be viewed as a very essential skill or attitude for the future. So one just needs to make up their mind. Um, this is the part where we get a little bit interactive. So what I wish now to orientate for the topic of the day, I hope you spend a few minutes with the person next to you. First of all, introduce yourself. Second of all, think, um, what do you think is important? Skills, attitudes, knowledge to know for the future. If you don't have any idea, you can reflect back on the keynote speaker we had this morning. He mentioned a few things, okay? So just for two minutes briefly. And then I think we try to put the microphone sort of go around and and everyone or like the groups can say one thing. Okay? Yeah? Yalla.
No, I think if we just, if we put the microphone around, they, they can hear, right? Can these both be on at the same time? It's not going to, okay, that's good. Hi. Yesterday, we had met. It's not in like the name in an email or something. Yeah, it feels like we met. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's a bright light. Thank you. Okay, is it okay that I just put the microphone around and I ask you to say one thing so that also the online audience, which of course I have like hundreds of of thousands, I think only my mom and dad are watching. So, uh, so if I put around, and they can also hear what you discuss. But oh, please, only one word, okay, or two. Um, we were thinking that, uh, or I was thinking actually, not we. So, um, the ability to sustain change because the world is so dynamic and changing all the time. Interesting, okay. And uh, we talked about two things, uh, both uh, um, attitudes and also to be able to cope with masses of uh, information and sort uh, what's important and what's not. Okay, we talk about uh, mission, we talk about uh, vision, and we talk about listen. So maybe listen, or learning to, l to listen. Like Something we heard like yesterday in the keynote speech, yeah. Uh, we talked about attitude, attitude of the leaders and attitude of the youth members. We discuss about the motivation and also a positive attitude. Uh, we discussed about uh, why we are doing it, so knowing why you want to do stuff or... Excellent. So we talked about responsibility and Great. tolerance. <laughs> <laughs> so on, <yeah. laughs> uh, we talked about the importance of um, being able to navigate in a in a future that's uh, less predictable. Okay. Attitude. <laughs> Flexibility. Okay. Oh, I'm supposed to talk to this. To be open-minded to the changes that are coming every day. Right. Mm. Uh, we talked about stress resistance and ability to meet deadlines. Mm. We talked about building relationships and good communication. Okay, well, we talk about importance of self-learning and self-development and necessity of di dialogue between adults and scouts. So you learned something Different. from this yeah. morning, great. <laughs> we talk about the ability to look. We talk about uh, develop a uh, life skill, attitude. It is important for young people. Thank you. We talked about uh, learning in general. Okay. We talked about resiliency and adaptivity. Nice. What did we talk about? Um, we talked about the importance of learning to learn. And I talked about <laughs> <laughs> understanding and accepting that the scientific method actually works. Yeah, and I tried to ask, what is electricity? Yeah. <laughs> Should we put this on? Yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, 
here just to present some views on what s essential skills or attitudes or knowledge for future could be. This one, I, I don't, you don't necessarily need to read, I just want to make out that there are a lot of different theories on this. This one is on the, um, the Ministry of Education in Finland about future education. It was published, I think, 2000 something, early 2000. This one is an um, society or community called 21st Century Partnerships for Learning. Um, it's um, sponsored by Microsoft and there are quite many schools globally taking part of the project. This one is a, from a book by Trilling and Faddle and I think these ideas here are mainly what the researchers nowadays talk about. I try to think, okay, Laura, you have read quite a lot, you've discussed quite a lot, what do you think are essential skills for the future? Well, I'm quite worried that if we don't change things, there's not going to be a globe anymore, there's not going to be future. So I decided that, okay, one thing that we need to do is to keep the globe going, right? And another thing that we need to get along with each other. And I deduce that to three values or three words that in my mind are essential for the future. I think that the youth of the future should value sustainability and have skills to work in a sustainable, to make the, our world sustainable. They should feel responsibility. They should value responsibility because, well, I'm going to say later, I think responsibility includes also action. And they should be able to so show respect. Of course, there are a lot of more things. But these are the things that I want to concentrate on today. These are the things that I've looked at in the scouting program. I hope you understand that I'm talking not only about concrete skills. I'm not talking about recycling or how to speak in a foreign language. But my, my attempt is to, to, to think that being able to, to be an active citizen in the future, you need to have a certain kind of mindset that then will direct your actions. And these are the values that I feel that could describe that mindset for the future active citizen. Uh, a Finnish theorist called Pirjo Stole has said that that future challenges all the forms of knowing, acting and being. And I hope that in my presentation, I can show you some forms of knowing, acting, and being that I feel that are required for the future's active citizenship. So, what I try to focus on today, knowing, acting, and being are challenged. And I personally decided, based on what I have read, that the values of sustainability, responsibility, and respect are those that a future citizen should possess. I have chosen three educational themes or three themes that we will approach and we will look at the Finnish scouting activities. Are they able to fulfill these educational themes? So first of all, we're looking at something that is called education for global responsibility that I think can be seen as an umbrella term for many things. Then I will discuss about importance of networks for the future citizens and we will end with some self-knowledge and identity issues. I come from a school that emphasizes critical theory. So I try to be critical in the end. I try to offer you some concerns that I have of the Finnish scouting program and some challenges. And I hope that when you leave today from here, you can also think that it's, it's my association, it's my 
countries or my associations program facing these sad challenges. Okay. I think I'm going to sit down now. Can you see me? Well, no wonder, see, you know, I don't think you can see me even now. <laughs> okay. Um, the interconnectedness of the world on multiple levels forces us to think all the forms of knowing, being, and acting. And I think the theory of education for global responsibility covers this quite well. When we talk about education for global responsibility, we talk about five themes of education. Environmental education, intercultural education, human rights education, development education, and education for conflict resolution and peace. Globally, this entity is quite often called global education. But in the Finnish perspective, there is amendment of responsibility, education for global responsibility. I personally like this amendment because it, it describes the ethical dimension that all these themes of education have, the certain value set that they have, and the commitment that is their goal. I think re the word responsibility includes a moral dedication. It really invites you to act responsibly. It, it invites you to be critical and think how to form a sustainable future. I know that's quite small, don't worry. Um, the content themes are very well suited in scouting. Uh, through, in my thematic analysis, I found that all the themes are presented in all the five age groups. And here I have some examples for you. So there's the environmental education, intercultural education, development education, human rights education, and peace and conflict resolution. And here we have the five age groups of Finnish scouting, it's Cub Scouts, Adventurers, Trackers, Explorers, and Rovers. I've only collected one example there, but there are many for all of these. For example, the Cub Scouts in environmental education get um, acquainted to different ways to save energy together with their group. Uh, the adventurers in intercultural education learn about scouting in another country. They realize that scouting is a global hobby. Trackers in development education find out about Wax and Wasm and about their uh, development cooperation projects. Explorers in human rights education uh, f how find out how to make a citizenship in initiative and they make one on their chosen topic. Rovers for example, in peace and conflict education, choose a matter that concerns them. They think arguments for and against that matter and find out how to influence on that matter. What to really, oh, what I find interesting is here are two things. First of all, the world opens up for a scout when they get older. So the Cub Scout, it, he or she works in the immediate environment with his or her own group, with the local surroundings, with the village and the society. But when the child gets older, the world opens. You interact with other troops. You travel to another city. You travel to another country. And also, methodology-wise, there is some change from doing to reflection. So when the scouts are smaller, the emphasis is on doing on things. Whereas when they grow older, they reflect and discuss more on what they have learned. 
I think the theme of education for global responsibility includes everything, knowing, doing and being. The methodology for education for global responsibility is encounters. Through encounters and experiences, awareness is raised. Encounters are uh, doing, right? Through doing occurs knowledge or vice versa. Knowing about something may lead into action. However, the strong value base for a sustainable and responsible future is formed through thorough reflection. What I find very suited for this is the scout methodology and the idea of learning by doing. The activities offer possibilities to take action within the own subculture of scouting, but they also encourage to act in other arenas and as well. But I want to repeat myself, these encounters and especially their careful reflection are the very essence of knowing and hopefully lately being a responsible citizen of the future. When we talk about encounters, I think we could move on to the other second theme that I find interesting and important in the future education, and that is networks. Uh, Pirjo Stole, who I referred to you already, uh, has raised diverse networks as vital arenas for action in the future. In order to be an active citizen, in future so society, individual needs to sh should possess skills to operate in and between multiple networks. And when we talk about multiple and diverse networks, they are diverse in cultural sense. They are diverse between different subcultures, for example, scouting or some other youth organization. They are networks that have perhaps long physical distance or hybrid networks, networks that change all the time. In the future, it is much harder for an individual to accomplish his goals by himself and he is highly dependent on his networks. This requires interaction. Being an active citizen, you are not only need to be able to form networks or lead them, but also you may be working in multiple networks at the same time. This requires good social skills. For example, you have to be able to maintain your social relationships. Simple. You have to be able to interact with different kinds of people. You need to be able to express your own thoughts also in a convincing manner as well as you have to be able to listen and give feedback to others. You also need to be able to analyze your own strengths and weaknesses and understand your role and the role of the others in different groups. Whoa, this is a lot to ask, right? Uh, what do you think? Is the scouting program able to answer these demands? Well, when I've looked at the Finnish scouting program, I think, yeah, quite fairly well. The activities involving intercultural education and encounters raise not only self-awareness, but ability to act with other people. They raise awareness how to understand deep, deep people from different backgrounds and how to cooperate with them. But more importantly, I think the subculture, or I could say mini society of scouting, enables individuals to practice creating, operating, maintaining, and leading networks. Here are some examples. It's so small. Um, what I found important in terms of networks and activities are the possibilities to practice networking in terms of leadership. They begin quite early. Actually, leadership training is embedded in the Finnish scouting program in one of the age groups. 
The other one, which is similar, the other notice or point that I want to make, and that is similar to when we talked about education for global responsibility, is the arenas of action. They widen when the child gets older. The diversity of networks, different subcultures, increases when the child grows older. And again, we can find support not only from the activities, which some of them you can see there, but also from the scout method. The idea of one's own group is very important. Things are discussed and they are decided together, even in the Cub Scouts. Uh, adventures take part in making the rules of the group. That's an important step when you're learning networking skills. As I mentioned, the leadership program teaches young scouts not only to lead others, but also identify and reflect one's own skills and one's position as a member of the group. And projects like camps, you learn to set goals, divide tasks, cooperate with and give feedback to others. Also, the hierarchical structure gives many, many examples of multiple networks. You can work with your own troop on a local level. You can work on a regional level. You can work on a national level or even on a global level. All of those are examples of work in a different networks. It is my opinion that scouting or the non-formal section, section of education is actually better in giving opportunities for networking than the school systems are at the moment. But once again, it is extremely important that these experiences are discussed and reflected. Now I maybe stand up, right? I can see some people falling asleep, so it's better. <laughs> uh, you may have already noticed that I think that to be well equipped for the future, it's not that you have certain skills, but you have a certain mindset. You possess certain values that direct you to act in a certain matter. Due to modern communication technologies, children are exposed to the realities of the world already when they are early. Uh, sorry, young. In the past, it was thought, and as I showed you the examples from the activities as well, in the past, it was thought that the child needs to first to know the closest surroundings. And from there, he or she is capable to widen the arena of action and experience. Well, the whole world is the arena of action already from the early age. I don't think children can be protected from the realities of the world. We have all the internet, all the news system, and even though if you try to protect your child, it may be the, may be the neighbor's child who exposes all these truths. So researchers widely agree that in all, if we want to prepare our children to face these realities of the world, a strong self-knowledge self and self-esteem are very basis of living in the hybrid societies. Knowledge of one's background, values, and a strong identity of oneself are key principles in a sustainable and res responsible citizenship in the future. Well, what does this mean in scouting? In my opinion, scouting gives opportunities for children to explore the past and the future. They are able to explore their own past and, of, of course, also their culture. They are given opportunities to ponder upon one's beliefs and values, and this is important. This happens in a guided, safe, and supportive setting. Challenges are age-appropriate. Assessment of oneself as individual and as a part of the group develop also one's understanding of one's sense. Scouting so, uh, offers a safe setting to succeed and fail. And it offers a group to identify oneself to and compare, what, compare oneself to. A group to share experiences, thoughts and ponder upon one's beliefs.
Yes. Here are some examples of the Finnish scouting activities that I've collected that are related to self-knowledge and identity. Uh, scouts learn to tell about themselves and about where they live. They learn about tell what is close to them. They learn to tell about what is important to them and listen what is important to others. They also learn about how to de develop oneself. It is my belief that through strong local and self-understanding, a global cosmopolitanist is raised. But unfortunately, quite often in the Finnish context, education about your background, about your traditions, about your culture is connected to nationalism and patriotism in a negative way. My interpretation, and I think also my interviews confirm this, that understanding about one's roots should be not viewed as negative, but it should be viewed as a key to understand other people and operate in a global level. So, I have now presented you three ideas. One about education for global responsibility and all what it includes. It's a very large theme. Secondly, I discussed about networks. And thirdly, I talked about self-knowledge and strong self-esteem as a vital skill or attitude for the future. All these are quite well presented in the Finnish scouting and in the activities. So we could assume and think that, okay, we are ready to and we are able to deliver education that is that prepares the members for future challenges. But I think I see some challenges anyway. Okay, so to, de uh, to, to develop a mindset that directs you to act sustainably and responsibly, responsibly you don't only need experiences and encounters, but you need opportunities to discuss and reflect these experiences and encounters. And here we come to the question of adult or peer guidance. And I think the important question is here, are the adults able to mentor and support the reflection of the children and youth? And this, of course, leads to the question of training. What sort of education do those people receive that act in an, a supportive or mentoring role? I, in my opinion, the education needs to provide tools to mentor reflection and support young people while they are pondering about quite challenging and difficult issues in their life. They're, they're building their worldview. And what is maybe we need to be critical about is that in a fast-changing world, these opinions may differ from those that are in a supportive role. So the support needs to be very delicate. We don't want to indoctrinate the opinions of the elderly, but we actually want the youth to have a chance to establish their own worldview. That is the only way that a new generation and new ways of thinking are developed. I think also our keynote speaker spoke about this in the morning. The role of reflection and especially how the training of adults is conducted, how they are given tools for mentoring and reflection, I find it really important. Another one, another challenge that I see is the mini society of scouting itself. My research is done in the Finnish scouting arena and I have said during this presentation already that the scouting um, environment offers children and young people arena to practice their skills in sort of a mini society. Well, what if that mini society of scouting doesn't respond to the society that's out there? As stated before, our societies are diverse in many ways, culturally, socioeconomically, in terms of spirituality, sexually, and so on. 
and they change also very rapidly. My fear at the moment is that the Finnish scouting environment is unable to offer an arena that corresponds with all the diversity in the society. My fear is that every time a scout needs to step, oh, I can't step over the gray line, needs to step out of the um, scouting scene to encounter diversity, it produces meaning of otherness. So otherness is exposed only outside scouting. We, we cannot face diversity within the scouting. Then the diversity actually becomes the other. It's not us. And that may cause fear, stereotypes, and even ideas of abnormality. Well, here again, reflection is in a key role, how these encounters are reflected and discussed. But also, I think, scouting in Finland needs to take a true step to be truly open to all and truly make an initiative for this. In this case, and only in this case, scouting can act as a mini society for the children and youth. Okay, I'm coming to my conclusion, don't worry. According to a report on future learning by the Future Education Committee of the Finnish Parliament, they say that our comprehensive school is able to provide tools for active citizenship, but it's actually incapable of providing arenas to action. And I think non-formal education is this arena for active citizenship and practicing that. Over half of the Finnish youth is somehow involved with non-formal education sector. That is quite a lot. And I think it is the um, task of non-formal education sector give children and youth an active role to practice their citizenship skills. We shouldn't see children and youth as objects of education, but we should see them as active producers of it. Why is this that I've talked to you today important? Well, I think it has an importance for your national organizations. At the moment, at least in Finland, they are renewing their strategic direction. Some of you may be renewing your educational program. And this means that the NSOs or NSAs need, should be able to predict the future. Quite difficult, I would say. But there are a lot of theories and a lot of ideas to choose from. But I think your NSOs need to make a value decision on what to focus on. What do you want your scouts to be like in the future? Your aim is to educate responsible citizens of the societies. So what are those values that you want your scouts to have? in order to be responsible citizens of future societies. I hope you remember the three values that I offered to you. I talked about sustainability, responsibility and respect. And please think, what does this mean in your country? What does this mean in your culture? And what they mean in terms of knowing, doing and being in your scouting setting. Here are the references I've used today. And especially if you're interested about different future ideas, I, I invite you to read the book by Drilling and Faddle about 21st century skills. If you're interested about the theme of global education and education for global responsibility, I advise you to go to Google and Google education for global responsibility and you will find few lovely publications by the Ministry of Education in Finland that explain you the theme more. Okay, thank you. Do we have any questions? Or I, I was also supposed to ask, do we have any online questions? Hey, um, I've been wondering, 
have you looked into uh, just the the, the, the the program material, what is out there, or ha have you also looked into the the actual program practices in the groups? So far, I've only looked at the program, so I've only looked at the activities. But my hope is that when I return to Finland, I will do some ethnographic observation, especially to answer how the education is conducted. Because at the moment, there's a lot of freedom in the scouting program. There's a lot of possibilities to choose. So if only looking at the activities, I don't think we see the whole truth. Yeah, one question from online participant. Um, Say, Ms. Vitola, what advice would you give to a youth adult leader wanting to do a similar research in their country through education and scouting? What advice? Well, I would advise to look at the program and what educational themes the program has and then maybe concentrate on few themes, what they feel is important, or then for, for ask from the audience. But I think the key is the program. We, we should trust the scouts should trust that our values and our educational aims are embedded in the program and use the program. Thank you. Reference, yes, I can. I'll, I'll come there and Th the that's online participants too. Yeah, we, green we, spot we I can, hear. We can do like this, yes. we can have a dialogue. Now I get my 15 minutes of fame. So, uh, thank you, Laura, for the presentation. Uh, you said the the world, the whole world, is the arena now, even for for even even for Cap Scouts and yeah. and the and the younger younger age sections that we have. So, uh, at least our program, the I'm I'm from Finland, so it's it's kind of <laughs> the same program that we're talking about here. So, uh, it's built such that the the there is still the thinking that it's the geographical distance yes. that now yeah. now matters. So, what what could be the next step if we wanna develop our program, how could we eliminate that distance mm. and start even from the Cap Scouts start mm. to make the arena, arena the whole world? Well, I think first we need to ask, is it necessary? Because as, as one of the, the last point that I had was the strong self-knowledge and strong self-esteem that now the researchers think that are able to somehow protect the children from these well, terrible things that they can see. So is it, is it necessary that the whole world is the arena of action in our program? That's a decision we need to make. Um, but as you said, now it's built so that you, you open up as, as, you, as you grow. It's very difficult to answer how to do it. But there needs to be a value choice whether to do it or not. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. uh, I would like to talk about uh, a specific situation. Uh, this is the situation in uh, many African countries mm. uh, I want to talk about. Uh, in the process of education, we try to reach to more people uh, we can in each country. Mm. But the main challenge is today uh, reaching also uh, these uh, young uh, people and children uh, who cannot uh, go to school, who cannot uh, have a specific formal education to be complete by our scouting approach. Uh, in this uh, changing uh, moment uh, of uh, globalization. Uh, I, I don't know myself how we'll manage this situation and not uh, 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 abandon uh, this category of uh, people uh, because they are poor, they cannot uh, uh, afford uh, uh, electricity to run a computer, to touch. Uh, there is nothing. Uh, uh, what 
this challenge is so big that uh, at the state level uh, they have no re response. Uh, perhaps uh, there is an, an, uh, a call here I, I'll do for solidarity, international solidarity, uh, to help us to find some solution uh, for this case. Uh, because uh, if education is a right of human beings, uh, we need to find a solution uh, for these people who uh, are citizens of the world also. Yeah. Thank you, sir. And I, I think if I was able to, to solve your problem, I would be a very clever woman. But, <laughs> <laughs> but what I, as I said, my, my context is to finish context. And in, in, in many ways, we as a, as a society, Finland has taken those steps that many countries in the world are still taking. And, and there, therefore, it's every country or every, every organization has their own skills uh, their own tasks to think what are the future skills so it, this can I'm, I'm sure that the in the stage where Finland is now and where the scouting program is now it cannot be adopted or it's not it's not important to adopt it as a such because then it would not um, reply to the needs of those people When you're speaking about networking, uh, you made the comment that in the future it's, it's going to be harder for young people to accomplish their goals by themselves. Mm. And a couple of my reflections on that. One, I, I think we are naturally social, social beings and the myth of self-sufficiency has been something we've lived with for 50 years, which isn't necessarily true. But I'm just curious if you could comment more about why you think in the future uh, that teamwork with that networking is going to be even more essential again well first of all I think in in many Western countries we live in a very individualized culture and and that I I, I know very little of the Asian culture but I think or the assumption I have is that the Asian cultures are much more social and 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 are not that individualistic as the Western was. I don't know. Maybe I have a stereotype here. Uh, so that's one reason why those networking skills need to be um, enhanced. At least in, in Finland, there are a lot of children who, who spend their past time playing with computers. Well, that can be social, yes, but it can be also very lonely. And then I had another point. Yes, because the the idea of community that you can also see here. There are people there uh, watching online and, and the, the communities, the networks, they expand and I think they become more complicated. And therefore you need more advanced skills to work within those networks. Okay, first of all, thank you, Laura. Uh, I know that you've been looking into the youth program the most, uh, but I still have a question about training. Um, so hopefully you can give some, some insight. Uh, you mentioned a few challenges that uh, at least the, the Finnish uh, leader training is facing. Uh, with your research in mind, do you think that scout training in general, or at least the, the Finnish uh, leader training in particular, uh, meet the requirements that we are, that the leaders are facing? Do you think that our training systems are uh, helping our leaders to help the youth? Well, if I answer honestly, I'm not sure if I'm welcome to finish scouting anymore, but... Um, <laughs> or, what, or, or, uh, or what should we do to to prepare our leaders in a better way? Well, I think there are a few challenges. First of all, is the role um, or the tool of reflection. That reflection is a skill that you need when you look at our scouting program. Well, it's been quite a while since I've done my leadership training, but at least then, and I 
assume, I haven't looked at the contents of leadership training yet that much, but at least what I assume and what I've seen in the field going on, the, not all the leaders have skills to support reflection. And then, of course, uh, one just very specific example is how to how to work in a group that has a great diversity of children, especially with those with um, some behavioral pro um, pro problems. I think that's even discussed at the moment in one of the online communities of Finnish Scouting. So there are two examples. But um, I know that our training program was renewed while the program was renewed, but maybe there are still some challenges that, that we should look more carefully upon. Um, a question online about the research uh, asking, do you measure continuously from year to year to watch the participant to grow and change? No, I haven't done that. I hope the Finnish Scouts do though. Well, I know that they, I, I know the Finnish Scouts collect a lot of data and I hope that at some point if, if I have an interest, I I will have an opportunity to look at that data. But I'm I'm more interested in the qualitative questions and in the quality questions. Uh, second question, uh, do Finnish Scouts have helicopter parents and that hover and do not let the Scout grow adequately? What is helicopter parents? Uh, that means... Uh, parents are always there watching and trying to make... Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, watching. Oh, I yeah, see. Watching. Oh, wow. Yeah. Control freaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I, I'm sure those parents exist all around the world, so I wouldn't think Finland is an exception. Okay, a uh, last question online. Uh, as a Scout, do you feel... Uh, these values you mentioned for future are embedded in the scout law? I think they are, yeah. Okay, so that's all for the online questions. Thank you, online <laughs> community. Yeah. I know that it won't be my mom. She's not going to ask questions like that. <laughs> Hello. I just have a quick comment on, the, on what Gustav asked, asked. that Whatever you do, make the program first and then make the training for the program for the adults because we didn't do that and yeah <laughs> we're screwed thank you William. no one else screwed but nearly okay. um, I really want to thank you all for coming in today I I really didn't think that there would be so many people here but really nice and really nice and I hope if you have any questions or if you want to discuss afterwards I'm I'm here for you thank you Thank you.